us. <laughs> so if we talk about tonight's lesson, let's think about what we did in the last lesson, and then I'll explain where we're going in the rest of today's lesson. So in the last lesson, we spent a lot of time dealing with straight line functions. And we spoke about how to find the standard form of a straight line. And we also spoke about how to find the x-intercept and how to find the y-intercept. And what I found was there's still quite a few students. We also spoke about f of x notation. Uh, a lot of students still need to consolidate a few more basics on straight lines before we go to the quadratic functions. And so tonight will be a mixture of more straight line functions, but some more details, and then also some basic quadratic equations. So in order for us to get to quadratic functions, we need to make sure we know how to use something called the formula very well. And so tonight's lesson will carry on from, from the first lesson by just making sure you know how to draw straight line graphs well, and also you know how to find something called intersection points. And then the second part of the lesson, we will move on to um, quadratic equations, which will help us when we get to quadratic functions. Okay, so that's an overview of where we're going tonight. And the other reason I'm, I'm taking an extra lesson for straight lines is a lot of the ideas that we learn with straight lines can then be applied to other types of functions. So I'd rather learn them well with the easiest function before we go to the sort of more uh, complex ones. Okay, so I want to do a little, uh, oh, a little warm up thing first, and I just want to ask you: here is a straight line that goes through two points. I want you to find me the equation of the straight line, and then I want you to find also the x and y intercepts. So this is probably the most standard question in the whole of functions. And I want to make sure you guys always get 100% for this. So over to you guys. It's just a little recap from the last lesson. Uh, if you have a question, you can raise your hand and I will help you. Um, but I'm hoping most of you are kind of thinking back to the last lesson. Um, and so over to you guys. Let's do this. Let's do it, guys. I believe in you. Yeah. These two kind of go together. Remember, trying is always the best. As long as you try, you'll definitely get there. Yeah, so I'm just going to give the students what they would get on the formula sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see. Let me use a different color for. So I see a couple of answers coming through. Let's just make sure that our gradients are the same. Now a minus of minus is a plus. So I get the gradient of two. And then I need to find my equation for my straight line. And I'm going to use what points? I'm going to use two and nine because I feel like that's the easier. Again, there's two methods for doing this. Okay, where did I get the five from? Okay, I'm almost, I'm going to find the five now. So just to remind you what I'm doing, when I found my gradient, 
Now I'm using method one again. There's two, remember there's two methods for doing this and I can, you can use either. I put my gradient into the standard straight line form and the two goes in, but I need to still find what the C is. And so what I do is I sub in a point that is on the line. So I'm using the point two nine and I sub it in. And where does it go? The Y and the nine goes to Y, the X goes to two. And I've got a solve for C. And so I get nine equals four plus C. And then I take away four from both sides and I get five is C and Y equals two X plus five. Now, what are my X and Y intercepts? That's what I want to know next. And there's a little rule you have to follow. You have to follow this rule. Whenever you find the Y intercept, you do something. Whenever you find the X intercept, you do something. And the Y intercept is a little bit easier actually because you can almost see it straight away. Yeah. So the Y intercept is actually going to be five and you can see it because this value C is always the y-intercept in standard form. Uh, but just to show you the rule, whenever you find the y-intercept, you make x zero. And what happens is that when you put the zero in, that goes away. And so then your coordinate is 0 to 5. To find your x-intercept, you need to make y equal to zero. And so I go naught is 2x plus 5. And then I'm going to move that 5 across or take away 5 from both sides. Get minus 5 is 2x. And then I divide both sides by 2. And I'm going to get minus 5 over 2. Now, if they just ask you for the intercept, minus 5 over 2 is fine. But if they want the full coordinate, it should be minus 5 over 2 naught. So if we zoom out for a second, what you have figured out is you have figured out the y-intercept, which is this one over here. And if I extended my line from here, let's call it this line over here is called the x-intercept. So I would say we keep practicing, practicing this until we just got it absolutely smashed. Uh, so I'm looking at the answers and the only mistake I sometimes see is people sometimes left off the negative. So be aware of that. Um, give me a thumbs up if you feel like you've got this type of question mastered. Give me a thumbs down if you feel like, oh, I'm still a little bit rusty here. Just want to get a feel for it because it is, it's just, it's such like easy marks in the bag. Okay. Okay, there are a few students who need more practice. What I want to encourage you to do is don't be afraid to watch this video again. Also, don't be afraid. I did a lot of straight lines in my topic on analytical geometry, and that might be very helpful to you. Okay, so in the next part of the lesson, the skills that you are learning now are going to be repeated. So those who still need more practice, you'll get more practice. But for those who are feeling comfortable, you'll be able to move on a little bit. Okay, because I can see this, there's, a, there's a split class in some ways. So I'm going to do an example of what I want in the next part of the lesson. I want everybody to just put your pens down for a second and watch this example. And then you are going to do questions like this for me. Now, in this question, I'm going to ask you to actually draw a graph. And so I'm going to show you the technique I use to draw graphs. And then I want you to mimic that. So this question says, consider the function y equals 2x plus, plus 1. In the very end, you need to draw the graph of y equals 2x minus 1. In order to get there, they've even given you sub-questions, find the y-intercept and find the x-intercept. So let me show you the process that I do. Whenever I draw a straight line graph, I always need two pieces of information, the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So I, I write one, I look at my function, and to find the y-intercept, I know I need to make x zero. When I make x zero in this question, 
I get the answer minus one. Okay, so my y-intercept is minus one. For the moment, I'm not writing the full coordinate form. Then the second bit of information I need is the x-intercept. Now I'm going to make y equal to zero. Notice how I, I write this little bit of information. It's always the opposite way around. And this just helps me remember. And in, in case you're curious as to where this comes from, if you think of any straight line, the x-intercept, which is here, will always be in line with y equal to zero. That's why there's going to be, <laughs> excuse the pun, a y equal to zero. That's why it works. Okay, it may not make sense yet, but I'll come back to that at a later stage. So if I go to my equation, y equals 2x minus 1, I replace the y with a 0, and I get this. Now I'm going to solve this equation. So I bring the minus 1 across. I get 1 equals 2x. And then I divide both sides by 2. And I'm going to get that uh, x is equal to a half. So what I now have is I have my y-intercept and I have my x-intercept. How do I draw a graph? Okay, so I need, in order to draw a straight line graph, I always need two points. And so what I'm going to do is in order to do a sketch graph, you have to have a Cartesian plane. So I draw a Cartesian plane, and I'm going to label this the x-axis, and I'm going to label this the y-axis. Now, guys, at this stage, remember, I'm doing this example completely myself. You are going to do the next example. This is just to show you what I want you to do. Now, what I do is I first look, think about where is this point going to be on my graph? So minus one, I suppose I should use a different color here. Let's use a different color. Y equals minus one is going to be down in this part over here. And so I'm just going to make a dot. I'm not even going to make an exact um, thing, just a dot. And my X is going to be positive a half. And so because a half is smaller than one, it should look smaller and I'm going to have a dot there. So all I do is I make my two dots and notice how the distance for the X is smaller than the distance for the Y because it's a smaller number. Then I draw my straight line through my two dots. Okay, now I'm not done yet. What have I not done that I know I still need to done? do? Sorry, In the chat, tell me what have I forgotten is one important step I still need to do. I need to label the graph and I need to label my intercepts. So this is where I like to say, use the full coordinate. So I'm going to say here, this is naught minus one. Oh, wait. And what I like doing is I love labeling only at the end because then I don't get, nothing gets in the way. So naught minus one there. And over here, what I have is I'm going to have, uh, this is going to be a half naught. Now it isn't wrong to just write a half or minus one. That's not wrong. It just depends what the question says. If it says label coordinates, you would label it like this. If it just left it, you could also write like a minus one there and a half there. It just depends on what the question says. For now, I'm going to use full coordinates. Okay. Now the last thing I haven't done is I need to label my graph and the label of the graph was y equals 2x minus 1. But sometimes if the graph was called like f of x equals, uh, in the last lesson I spoke to you a little bit about f of x notation. If the graph was called f of x equals 2x minus 1, sometimes you see the graph labeled as just f. And that would also be fine. Now, I want everybody to try and do the same thing but I want you to do that using the graph that I'm going to show you on the right-hand side. So uh, let me bring this down here. And I'm going to move this out the way. I want everybody to draw me a sketch graph of 
y equals minus x plus 4. And I want you to do three steps for me. I want you to do step one, find the y-intercept. Step two, find the x-intercept. And then step three, I want you to sketch the graph. Just how I did now. With all the labels and everything. So, over to you guys. Draw me a nice sketch graph. I will zoom out a little bit just so you can see my, my working. And I will make this a bit bigger so that you can see that. And teacher Peter, is it okay if we show you our graph when we're done on the camera also? Oh, that would be lovely. Yes. How, that how it looks like. Yeah. Let's do this, guys. Let's do it. Let's see our straight lines so we can see if we, we have it right. Yeah. On. Draw your graphs, guys, on the paper so we can see when you're done, you can show it to us on the camera. That will be lovely. Yeah. I would like to see some, some so, people's drawing. <laughs> so, so some students I see are saying, you know what? I've seen the show before. I know my y-intercept is four, and that's fine. You start to notice this pattern that the y-intercept is always, if it's in standard form, you can just say y is 4 because you know when you put x is 0 in, it knocks out the x part. I don't mind that, but just watch out. We're going to do a harder example later where that won't be quite as easy. So what's the x-intercept going to be? Hmm. Well, we said we make y equal to 0. Now, what is x going to have to be? I think I can just move the minus x across. And I'll get x is 4. Perfect. So I've got my y-intercept. I've got my x-intercept. Now I've got to draw my graph. Now, step one was to draw a Cartesian plane. Step two was to make little dots. And where are those dots going to be? That's the question. So I, I don't label my points until the very end. So I just put dots in approximately the right places because it's a sketch graph. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. It has to be, it has to make sense in terms of like scale that, you know, for example, yeah, it has to make logical sense, but it doesn't have to be a perfectly measured graph. So my Y intercept is at four. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to make a dot over there. Or maybe I should use a red dot. Now, if I'm using two blocks to be four, then my x-intercept should be over here. So those are my two dots. And so now I need to think about, uh, non to causal, let's see your graph. I hear, I, I see that you it's- You guys, see oh, there we go. doing the graph. Let's see them. Oh, let me go back here. Oh, wow. Anele is also showing the graph. Okay, and so this is going to be the point. Ah, you guys are awesome. Um, Gelani is also showing the graph. Pabalo also. So, teacher Peter, how, how many marks do you think we get if we do label and draw the graph so we can mark? This would be four marks. So you'd get, um, you'd get a mark for each of the intercepts. You'd get a mark for, for working them out. You'd get a mark for drawing your graph correctly. And you'd probably get a mark for labeling the equation and making sure all your other things are correctly labeled. 
So it would be about either three or four marks is what you would get for that. Okay. Nice. Four in the bag. Four marks. Oh. So what I like, I'm seeing good things. What I want to do is I want to do another one, which is a little bit more tricky. But I, I guys, what I see, I see good things. So well done. Okay, what if, I'm going to move on now. Are there any questions before I move on? Because I think you've done well. I want you to try and draw for me now. I'm giving you two graphs. Oh. And the one graph is 2y plus 4x. Let me do this. 2y plus 4x equals 8. And I want you to try and draw this straight line graph. And then after you've done that one, I want you to also try and draw this straight line graph. So do all the working. And I want you to try and put them on the same set of axes. Okay. But first of all, very first, forget about the second one. For now, I want you to try and do the one on the left. Draw the graph. Then come along and do the second one. Do the working out and try and plot it on the same Cartesian plane. Now, before I let you loose on this one over here, what is special about the one on the left? Would anybody like to unmute and tell me what's special and what I have to watch out for? Um, Aaron, I'm going to come to you. Aaron, what do I need to watch out for in the one on the left-hand side? Can you hear me, Aaron? It is not in standard form. It's not in standard form. Okay. What do I need to... Can I still use my other method? So y is equal to mx plus c. Yeah, well, just note the, the, the step where we go y intercept, x intercept. That does still work, okay? Huh? Yes. Perfect. So this is just... We need to be careful that for the y intercept, we need to remember we make x zero. And then for the x-intercept, we need to make y zero. Okay, enough hints from, from, from me. I want to see, can you draw this graph? Once you've drawn it, then I want you to see, can you draw the second one, which also involves some working out. And then we'll see what your Cartesian plane looks like. It should have two graphs on it. So teacher Peter, Anela wants to know, and, and many of them wants to know that will they be marked down if they don't use the, their symbol? I'm not quite sure because they say that their teacher used the therefore symbol. Symbol, symbol. Um, My, okay. The therefore symbol, you don't have to use the therefore symbol. You can, therefore just means carrying on, carrying on. But you don't have to put, strictly speaking, you don't have to put therefore signs um throughout this working out, like how I'm writing it is fine. Um, yeah. Okay, let us get, find the y-intercept here. To find the y-intercept, I make x naught. And what that means is I have that. And then I should get y is four. Um, teacher Peter, David, yeah. and Aurora, I'm not sure if they want to answer the questions or they have questions. Okay. So yes, I'm just going to work through the first bit um, here, and then I'll come to them in a moment. Uh, so y equals naught for this. And for when y is naught, so then I get 4x is 8. And then I should get that x is two so my working out says that the y-intercept is four and the x-intercept is two so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to draw my graph and then i'm going to ask a student to help me go through the process if they're feeling comfortable to do so. So, uh, Oretiwe, I'm going to come to you. Good evening, sir. Hello. So, can I please ask, when um, we solve this, do we have to put it into standard form? or You don't have to. Um, okay. So, if you would like to, 
you can put it into standard form and it's not going to go wrong. It'll give you the same answer. But what I, the reason I chose this example is I wanted to show you that the method works even if it's not in standard form. So by, when you find the X and Y intercept, so for me, I don't think I would because it takes up extra time, but is it wrong? No problem at all. You'll still get the right answer. Okay, thank you. Okay. That helps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my dot. And for X is two, um, I'm going to use that. Now notice guys how I'm using the blocks. Now, if that's X is two, when I label Y is four, I can't use two blocks. I have to then use four blocks. Now I haven't labeled everything yet, but I love that I put my two dots there. So now I take my ruler. Now I don't have a ruler myself. Now I have to use sort of my hand, but I can draw my line, straight line to go through. Now I'm almost done. The last thing I have to do is label. And so I'm going to label my equation up here. And then I also need to label my points. Now there is a, a debate. Some people will say, can I just write X is two here and Y is four? Not wrong at all. But if the question says write full coordinates, then you need to write it like that. Uh, and then two naught. Now, that's only part of the question done. I want you guys to do the working out for the second question. And then I want you to put it on your graph. And then I'm actually going to ask some of you, before we're going to go to a break, but I'm even going to ask you, what is the intersection point? But that's for after the break. Um, should we label the graph as it was given to us or can we use standard form? You can label the graph graph with either non-standard or standard form. Both are considered correct labels. Hmm. Okay, second, second graph, uh, to find the y-intercept for the second one, uh, my y-intercept is going to be minus five. And the reason I know that so quickly is it's in standard form. To find the x-intercept, I make y zero. And I get that. And then I get that. And I should get X is five over two. Now, I want to draw this graph on the same set of axes. So think about my process. What is the very first thing I do? I make my dots that relate to the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So I'm gonna give you a little bit more time to do that. And then once we finish this part of the question, we're gonna take a break. Let's see those graphs, guys. Let's see those graphs, yeah. David and Abongwe, remember that you can put your questions also on the chat. Hmm. Uh, David, I see your hands up. Do you have a? Do you want to unmute, David? Oh yeah, yes, sir. Uh, sir, how are you? I'm very good, David. How are you? Yeah, I'm well. So before, okay, back to the first question. Before us finding the y and x intercept, could we yeah. have not? Uh, could we have not uh, trans transposed for x to the other side before finding the x and y intercept? Okay. You, you absolutely can, David. So you can move things around. And as long as you don't break any mathematical rules, you will still get the same answer. So the main thing I want you to check out is that you are getting the same answer because there's many different ways to do this. Um, and so as long as you are consistent and your way is logical, you will still get the same answer. Okay. So I'm going to show you the second graph now. So minus five, if I use my one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to make a dot down here for minus five. And then two and a half, well, it has to be bigger. So it's going to be over here. And what I now see is I draw my graph going through those two points. And then I'm going to label my graph. Now, in this case, the graph says f of x is 2x minus 5. What's lovely about f of x notation is I can just label this function f. What a pleasure. No extra work at all. And then I label my points here. This is going to be 
five over two zero. And then this point is gonna be naught minus five. Okay, so in recapping, when we draw straight line graphs, there's a very definite process we go through. We need two points. We find those two points by finding the X and Y intercepts. Once we found those two points, we make two dots on our Cartesian plane. We draw a straight line through them. And then we label the graph and we label our points. And that's it. Like this would be eight marks in the bag or probably six marks to be fair. Now. Wow. That's a lot still. A lot. But we are going to take a break now. But when we come back, there is a point that has got my attention. It's called the intersection point. And this is where the red graph meets the black graph. And we're going to talk about in functions, how do we find the intersection points of two straight lines? Because this is a very common exam question. But before we can think about that, we need a break. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stand up and stretch. And um, Yulanda is going to be awarding points for technique enthusiasm, various other degrees of importance. And I want to see everybody standing up and just taking a break because we have been working hard. All right. Ooh. Guys, let's stretch. It's good for you. Yeah, Andy, so I see, I see you, girl. I see you. Marcel, I'm doing a you calf see stretch. <laughs> calf stretch for me. Calf stretch for me. You don't know Linda, you, you need to stretch, Linda. I see you. Stand Linda, up. come on, you can do it. We believe in you. Give us a neck stretch there, Linda. Give us a, just a little. Oh. There, there we go. go. So I like that exercise. Also, I like your, I like your. <laughs> Very good. I like that one. Does everybody see not to cause those one? It's like a yeah, I like it. Like a wave. Uh, oh, how are you? Oh, that was good. I don't know. <laughs> okay. While we are all stretching out, I don't want to do that one. I want to do this one. So here is your brain break. If you have three stormtroopers, give you 45. Okay, what is the question? A clock plus two bananas, sets of bananas times a stormtrooper or something from Star Wars. What do you get? That is the, the question. Mm. Let's do this, guys. Let's find an answer. Let's work all together to get there. <laughs> yeah, I, Rua, I think store, it does look like a stormtrooper. Hey, if you use your imagination. Um, there's this really good show called, well, I've heard it's a good show called Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I think I, and that's from the Star Wars world. So I'm, I've got Star Wars on the brain. I You're think. going with Star Wars. <laughs> okay. So Stormtrooper 15. I agree because it has to be to get to 45. Uh, banana, what is a banana? Banana and uh, Nokalunga says four, which I agree with because that's how you would get to 23. And then what's a clock going to be? Uh, a clock, I agree with Rachel, it's going to be three. So that's three for that. And now the power of bod mass. Do you know what happens first? So multiplication should happen first. So we get that bit, which is 60. And then three plus four is seven. And so I get 67. And so does Rachel and Anele, Corsi, Seri. Well, Tembekile, so well it's looking, looking good. Um, cool. Well okay. Done, guys. So I do want to make sure, guys, before we start with the second part of the lesson, 
that you have had a bit of a stretch because we all, yeah, your brains are getting a workout. So please stand up for a second if you need to. Um, but, so Cameron's saying the last group of bananas is three. I think all the all the bananas. Uh, oh, so. Oh, so you're saying. Ah, oh, have we? I just let's have a quick look at this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's a three. And that's a three. So I see what you're saying. Okay, I'm not going to go on. I missed that have one. Look, have a look at this, guys. So I think wow. we made. So if we look at this, this is four because there's four bananas. Well, well spotted. Hold on. Now, in this picture, there are three bananas. One, two, three, and each banana is worth one, basically. So, I mean, what's implied is that at the top, if there are four bananas and you can see four, each banana is one. So then the answer is actually going to be quite different. Wow, it's going to be three. Uh oh, but three. even the special. Uh oh. Um, 15, which is four, six and 45, or 45. But, teacher Pizza, even now, this. Even the, the weird funny shape also, yeah. if you get it, the last funny shape, it doesn't look like the rest of the funny shape. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to say is both answers are actually correct because the information, given how it works at the moment, there's a square missing in the Star Wars thing as well. Okay, guys, what I'm going to say is I really applaud the fact that you've picked that up. I think at this stage, both answers would be fine for tonight because we're debating whether or not the question, if it's included or not. Um, but the main thing is I'm, I'm really impressed by your, um, the, the thinking. Okay. So I'm going to head back to our class, but yeah, well done on that. Okay. So what I want to continue with now is I want to find this thing called the intersection point. Does anybody know how to find the intersection point for two straight lines? Would you like to tell us? And then if not, I will go ahead and show you, but I just want to give you a chance to maybe share some of your knowledge with us. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down both equations that we are dealing with. Uh, the other one is f of x equals 2x minus 5. So I'm just going to call it y equals 2x minus 5. Okay, so guys, the good news is there's a lovely method for this. Are there any students with their hands up? A bong way. Do you want to explain yes, yes, how to find, how to find uh, intersection points? Bongwe, can you help us? Okay, this is how you do it, guys. And if you were in my course on analytical geometry, you would you would probably remember me talking about this. When you are solving for an intersection point, you look at the two equations, and of the two, one of them will probably look easier, and one of them will probably look harder. So I'm going to call this equation one, which is this was the uh, which one was it? It was the uh, red straight line. And then I'm going to call the second one, I'm going to call that equation two. Which of these two equations looks easier to you? Put your answer in the chat. Is it equation one or equation two? Which one looks easier? Put your answer in the, in the chat. Okay, I agree. So it's definitely equation two looks the easier. So what you need to do to find the intersection point is you take the easy one and you sub it into the harder one. So I'm going to take equation one and I'm going to leave a big space for y. So notice I'm, I'm now working with the harder one and I've rewritten it, but I've left a space for y. Okay, now, what's going to happen is I'm subbing in y equals 2x minus 5. I'm just replacing the y and I'm putting it into that equation. And what that does is it eliminates one of the variables. Yeah. So now what we're doing is we have to solve this equation. And in order to solve this equation, 
I'm going to multiply the two out. So I'm going to get 4x. So guys, I'm going to do this one as an example. Then I'm going to give you another chance to do this afterwards. So I'm multiplying out. Then I need to ask myself, uh, I'm going to collect my 4x and 4x and I get 8x. And then I'm going to move the minus 10 to the other side and I get 8 plus 10. And then let me just give myself a little bit more space. So I get 8x is 18. And then I divide both sides by eight and I get 18 over eight, which according to my calculator, I'm not afraid of using my calculator, especially late in the night. I get nine over four. Or you could write that as two and a quarter. Both are correct. So what that means is the X coordinates of the, uh, the green dot. Now, I know it's very small now, but basically the X coordinate of the intersection point is that. Who would like to tell me how to find the Y coordinate? Because I've only found the X. I'd love a student to, to put their hand up and help me out. Um, Ammo, could you help me? Or Teddy? Teddy, I'm going to come to you. Teddy, what do I need to do to find the, the Y coordinate of this? Can you unmute Teddy? Guys, remember, if you want to answer, you can put your hand up and okay. you can put it. So we got one of the X. Yeah. So we'll sub it into equation one. Not into equation one, but you're close. So you do sub the X back into, but I go back to the easy equation. So which of the two is the easier equation? Equation two, sir. Yeah. And so where there's an X, and I'm just going to put there nine over four, minus five and so yeah. i'm going to use my calculator again do you have the final answer yet teddy or, or not no sir it's okay. minus 0, 0.5 what do you, i get minus a half or minus zero comma yeah. yeah yes sir so what my intersection point is is it's going to be basically two and a quarter and minus a half Oh, and you could write it in decimal differently as well. But basically, so what I've showed you here now, guys, I just want to repeat this and then you're going to do this for me. To find the intersection of two straight lines, you sub the easy one into the hard one. You find one of the values and then you sub back into the original to find the second value. Okay. So I want to give you a chance to practice that tonight. So let's go to these uh, let me go to this one. Uh, in fact, let me go to this one over here. So these are two straight line graphs. I could ask you to draw them, but you've already done that earlier in the lesson. What I want you to do now for me is I want you to find the intersection points of these two straight line graphs. Over to you guys. And if you have a question, just raise them hand. Or raise your hand. Let's do this, guys. Let's practice it. Let's go. Okay. Ammo, let's... How can I help? Um, sir, I wanted to ask, so if you want to find the point of intersection, do you always use simultaneous equations? Yes. The, the only... Other situation can be is if they, I mean, if they literally give you a graph and the graph has like a scale like this and you can see where the two points meet, then maybe you could say, okay, if this is in line with two, one, two, three, four, and this is in line with four, then you know you can read off the graph that the intersection is two, four. But if they just give you the graphs, and this is often what happens, they give you the formula. And they say, find the point of intersection um, or find the intercept. You need to know the method that you use. Does that help? Yes, sir. Thank you. Cool.
for me, I think this equation over here looks much easier. And so I would sub the, the easy one into the hard one is what I would do. So first I'm subbing in Y. So I'm gonna leave a blank space for Y. Now, some students also asking, can you, could you sub in X or Y? You can sub in whichever one works for you. But a lot of the time it ends up being Y, but it basically doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. So Y equals, okay, so this has to be two X plus one. See what else you can get. I get X is minus one as my first coordinate. And what is my second coordinate? It is gonna be, uh, let's have a look. I should sub that back into the original. So I go two times X plus one, and I'm gonna put minus one in there. And then I get that indeed. So the intersection point is going to be minus one, minus one. Well done, guys. Oh, did well. Done. Okay, let's do one more of these. I feel like we want to do one more just to make sure we've got this in the bag. So I'll make it a little bit tougher, not too much. And I will guide you for this first bit. So last question of the day, last question. You're given these two equations on the top left-hand side, and you have to find the point of intersection. The one tip I'm gonna give you is take this one over here and ask yourself, could I rearrange it to make it even simpler. Of the two equations, there's no doubt that this one at the top here is the easier one, but it would be so nice if it was written in a slightly different form. I'm gonna give you that hint, and then I wanna see, can you find the intersection point for those two, two um, straight line graphs? Over to you guys, and that's the last question of the day. <laughs> Let's do this. this is the last question yes because we are <laughs> we are aware <laughs> <laughs> we have we take a, last one. a compliment a compliment you know sometimes you can have too much of a good thing so we don't want to you know we don't want to over you know we want to keep ourselves hungry <laughs> so Cameron do you do you know what I what my hint is trying to tell you can you see the hint I'm trying to send you Standard form, you on the money, yes. If you change it to standard form, that will help you, yes. So Reta Bile, what I was thinking is, in the second question, when you're solving it, if you rewrote X plus Y is eight, if you wrote that as Y equals um, minus X plus eight, that is still the same equation, but it's so much easier to deal with. So that's what I was kind of trying, thinking of. Now ask yourself, what is the process to define this intersection point? And then we'll, we'll go from there.
you guys are doing great. You guys did a good job. So just continue. Remember that uh, the recordings will always be there for you to watch again this lesson. So don't worry if you don't understand much. Practice makes it all perfect. Yeah. So as we doing this last question, the second step that I do is I rewrite the hard one with a big open space. And the big open space reminds me where I need to put something. And so what is the thing that I'm putting into this? I'm subbing in the easy equation. And what it does is it eliminates one of the variables. There is no longer a Y anywhere. Then I can do my multiply out. Which, if as long as I don't make a silly mistake, I should get... Should get that. And then, wonderful, 3x minus 2x is just 1x. How fantastic. And then if I bring the 16 to the other side, I'm going to get 21 minus 16, which is 5. And so I get x is 5. Now, what is my y going to be is the question. I'll give you guys a moment to put that in the chats. So once I've found my x, so x is 5, I need to sub it back in the original, but I'm going to use this lovely easy standard form one, which is y equals minus something plus 8, and that something was 5, and so I then get minus 5 plus 8, which is 3. And so my intersection point would be 5, 3. Yeah. Ooh, okay. And I think like everybody oh. nailed this question. I just want to get a sense of the class. If you feel like you understand intersection points, finding intersection points, just give us a thumbs up. If you feel like you still need more practice on this intersection point, give us a thumbs down. Okay. So what I want to say is that we did do this in my course on analytical geometry. And so I really recommend that if you need more practice, have a look at that video over there because intersection points come up in pretty much every single exam. It's such a common type of thing. And so even if you need a bit more practice, if today was the beginning of your journey to understanding it, then I think we've done a good job. Okay. Um, if I could ask you, Yulanda, to please put the quiz uh, in, the, in the chat stream for the students. In the next lesson, we will start with quadratic equations and then move with those quadratic equations into quadratic functions. Luckily, when we are doing that, we can reuse a lot of the skills we've done in these first two lessons. Okay. And yes, not because often you just need more practice, huh? but remember the website is filled with lessons from even from other teachers from grade 10 functions, um, from lessons I've done. So it's just finding the right material that, that meets your need. Okay. Uh, good luck with the quiz. I hope it goes well. And Nizori, what topic are we, so what topic will this be in? We're in functions at the moment. Oh, you want to know what way should you look? Maybe the quiz, I'm not sure. No, she's thinking about where does she go to look at other functions. Um, you can either look at grade uh, 10 or grade 12 uh, foundations or look at analytical geometry. In analytical geometry, which I did probably about a month ago, we did a lot of straight lines, gradients, um, that type of thing. Okay, cool.